before we took break, I had you running the service locally and you got to see that those two endpoints that we have on port 4000, you saw the pprof one in the browser and then I showed you the XP ma, XP var mon, um, dashboard, terminal dashboard for the VARs endpoint for our metrics. That's great and all, but we need to make sure that also runs in our Kubernetes cluster. So we've got some configuration to do here. So I'm going to go, I'm going to close all this up for a second. And I'm going to go to our Zarf Kubernetes base sales for now, and I'm also going to our main project here and just clean up our project structure for a second. And I'm gonna go into the same thing. And I'm gonna add a couple of things here. I'm gonna add port 3000 only because it's coming next and um, there's no reason to not add both of them. So what I'm doing here is I'm telling Kubernetes on the deployment side that this service will be wanting to listen on port 3000 and 4000. So we're gonna be setting up um, our ability to set up some DNS routing and bind it back over to this kind of this service that's running in this pod. So I'm giving it a name and I'm defining what the container ports are. And then what I'm going to do here for now is just to find this service that we're going to really well define at the dev level. A service is basically going to give us the ability to configure the, the networking for all of these services and pods that we're going to have. So I'm going to do that. Then I'm going to go to our dev side. And I'm going to look at our patch again. And what I'm going to do is bring in um, the service changes that in my world are very specific to just the dev environment. You might say, well, I want this in all environments. That might be, and you can move all this stuff to the base. But if I put this in the dev environment, it gives you a little bit more flexibility um, on the ports. So this is really what's important here, right? All this has to match the base so we can stitch it together. Type is the cluster IP. And then essentially this name, Um, or oh, the target port name is, is matching on the other side. I'm surprised I don't have, hmm, it's working, but I'm surprised I don't have this as the target port. So I'll have to look at that. That's interesting. I should have this here. Hmm, I may have to fix that on the other side. So what we're saying here in the service is that we're going to expose port 3000 out of our pod, which is mapping to port 3000 here that we know is the service is going to be listening. So that's that port matching. So we know that we're going to be inside the service opening port 3000 and 4000, and we're going to use the same ports outside. I could make this something else, right? Just like we do that in Docker a lot of times, you have the inside port and the outside port. We're going to think of this as that outside port bound to that inside port. So, but it's not bound all the way out to the machine. It's just going to be bound outside of the pod inside the cluster. So essentially we're doing this. 4,000 on the inside. That's what we saw in the base with this, that configuration. And then here in the service, we're, we're, we're doing that on the outside. Now, again, it's only inside the cluster. I won't be able to access that outside the cluster. We're going to attempt to use our telepresence to tunnel in to keep that secure. Okay. 
I think this is all we're going to need to do, but this also comes with a deployment change. So I'm going to do the following here. I'm going to do this on my side right now just because this is tricky and I don't want to get everybody uh, all over the place. So I'm going to do the following. I'm saving these changes. And then I'm going to do a make dev update apply. Let me just run this locally here because this stuff is tricky. So it did rerun the service. I see that all here. I'm going to just do another um, describe sales for a second. I can run my logs here. I see that the router started on 4,000. So I know we're running that code. Did I not um, copy this? And I wanted to look at here. So there it is, 3,000, 4,000. However, <laughs> however, I didn't expose this all the way out to the machine. So if I go to 4,000 debug pprof, I'm not going to see anything. It's not exposed. OK. So I could take this one step forward and expose it all the way out through kind. But this is where I want to play with the IntelliSense. So we're going to do a couple things here. And then eventually, I'm going to tighten all this sort of stuff up in a, in, a, in a dev up. But let me just do this for now, just so we can, I'm going to do it here just as a dev tell, just to get it working. And then we'll, we'll clean all this stuff up in a second. I'm going to load the telepresence image manually here. So I don't have to go through any other sort of Docker pull repository networking stuff. I already have the telepresence loaded. So I'm going to stage that container in the cluster because that container is going to run as a separate pod. All right. So we're going to have a second pod now when this all works. And then what I'm going to do is these two commands. This is where things get tricky. The helm install command um, basically installs the new pod that we need running that image. So what that's going to do, oh, I'll look at that in a second, Nathan. What that's going to do now is set up another pod with the telepresence in it. And then the next command is going to try to connect to that pod, creating the VPN tunnel. Everything works. Um, OK, uh, let me look at that in a second. Now, unfortunately, Telepresence has decided to write three files in secure locations. I don't know why. So when you run Telepresence in a terminal for the first time, it's going to ask you for your password. It's so it can write three different files out for logging and stuff. So you don't have to get too scared about that. So I'm going to run this. Now, um, target port, container port. It's, it is not a no, I don't remember saying node port. So now I'm, but let's get back to that after we see this working. OK. So let me, I'm going to run this manually one at a time just to make sure. OK, so let me, oh, but I don't have that. So let me do this then instead. I'll call this devtel load. I'll call this one. 
So let's do the load. And sure enough, I put this in. It should have worked. What did I do? Oh, I don't have this variable here, do I? OK. You know what? Let me at least add all these variables to our I'll add them here. All right, I'll add them here. All right, here we go. So that's just loading the telepresence image, just like we loaded it for our own images. And then I will do the tell run. Let's see where we're at. So if you notice in the status now, a new namespace called ambassador came in, and we now have that new traffic manager pod running in our cluster. That's what the Helm install did. And then when I run the connect command, you can see it's asking me for my password because it wants to, if you look here, need root privileges to run, and it's telling you kind of the disk location that it's, for whatever crazy reason, has decided to use for their logs and stuff. So I'm gonna hopefully do that right. And I'm lucky here that it connected to the cluster. So now telepresence has created that sort of um, tunnel that we talked about, which now means that we should be able to talk to um, our sales API, we just need the right um, DNS name, right? We need our, our, the, the right name for that. So, where off time I am, just looking for here it is, right here. Okay. So, let me grab this here. Let me add this to our make file as well. And I'll clean it up. So, the URL that we're going to need to access with the telepresence is going to be our sales service, um, the namespace, sales system, service, cluster, uh, local, and then in our case, it's going to be 4,000. I'm going to say debug pprof. So, Remembering here, sales system is the namespace. Um, sales is the name of the, should be the name of the, oh, let's come here for a second. Sales service is the name of the service. Remember, we're doing that down there for the networking. So in that sort of reverse order, the sales service and the sales system namespace service cluster local, port 4000, and then debug, pprof, if telepresence is working, and I got this right, There it is. So what I've now been able to do is pretend like I'm inside the cluster now, accessing everything kind of securely, thanks to telepresence here. For the full course, visit courses.ardenlabs.com.